great. It's great to have you here on the White Owl Talk series. Um, the purpose of the series is to learn important life lessons that uh, young people can emulate. So you were born in Delhi and you studied in Sardar Army School. Mm -hmm. Did uh, you did your MBA from IIM uh, Lucknow before starting a long career in banking? And you joined BHP in 2016 and are currently Chief Commercial Officer. So your career has followed an amazing trajectory. I have a lot of questions about it. But since we only have 20 minutes, I'll restrict it to your uh, life guiding principles and your key takeaways. Growing up, uh, what were the core values you imbibed from school and at home? And how did these values help shape the person you are today? Yeah, very, very good. Uh, so I think growing up, one uh, key value uh, wo which which was there was that I was uh, I was quite uh, um, quite enamored by attracted by always learning and that was the environment I grew up in as well not just in school but also in in at home and what I mean by all always learning is not just books not just your textbook syllabus uh, but uh, everything around you being interested in the world as it is, uh, being having wide interests, reading up a lot, being curious, really being curious about trying to make sense of uh, everything around you. And I think uh, that particular value um, and trait has really uh, held me in very good stead, especially as I have shifted career uh, in different geographies and different industries and different roles um, and I think as the world becomes more and more complex uh, to continue to increase your awareness learning uh, and keep developing yourself is really critical life skill because our textbook knowledge gets stale very very quickly but the way you think the way you can make sense of the world doesn't and hence Continuously learning is one of those things. So that is one core value. And the second uh, uh, important issue is uh, uh, the what is important, but also how is important. And what I mean by that is what is what we do. You know, you want to sit for an exam and you sit for an exam and how you do it. But how is equally important. How do you relate with other people? Mm. Uh, have you got the ability to empathize with people? Can you work with others in a collaborative way? Um, can you look at uh, doing what you need to do with a sense of integrity? And I think that how was very important when I was growing up, that value system. And, um, and I have seen that through my career, that that has played a very important part. Not just the what, what I knew as, uh, as content, but also how. Yeah. How I related to how I came across as a leader or as a person. So I would say these two for sure. Okay. And um, what do you think would be your top three superpowers? Um, I don't know whether superpower or not, but I think uh, first coping with change, making sense of it, and then thriving on change, which nowadays we also call resilience. That is a superpower worth having any day. As you can see, even in COVID world, uh, lots of things have changed. And it's very perturbing because things become out of your control. So how you identify change, become self-aware of how you are reacting to it, cope with it, and then not only cope with it, actually learn to thrive on change. If change happens, look for opportunity. You look for different ways of making yourself more effective and others more effective. I think resilience is a superpower I definitely have, and I would uh, encourage everyone to, to have that. The second is, um, uh, I think, uh, being, uh, being resilient, but also uh, doing what you do with full passion. Uh, it's, a, it's a superpower to be not just be distracted when you're doing things, you know, to remain focused. I think when you love what you're doing and you are good at it, or you're trying to become good at it, and then you know that it's meaningful. These three things, if they're working together, uh, you know, you will love, you will work, work and the hours will go by and you don't understand that actually hours have gone by. Yeah. So to be in flow in what you do is important because that's what 
makes you happy. You found meaning, you're good at it, and you love doing it and, and getting it. So I think the second superpower is to be focused in the moment and enjoy what you do. If you're doing that, then you'll get success as well as you will not think of anything as a, as a chore, as a mere work. Yeah. Uh, how does it feel to be the first woman in the role of chief commercial officer at BHP? Of myself, as a, it's quite a privilege to be the chief commercial officer. For those who don't know, BHP is the largest natural resources company in the world. $150 billion or so of uh, market capitalization. But, uh, I, you know, to be the first woman and Asian, first Asian uh, chief commercial officer in a company which has been there for 113 years it is a privilege. Uh, I feel humbled about it. But I know lots of young women in our industry look at that and they are able to see for the first time a woman in the role. So that's great. But the way I think about that role is that I am the chief commercial officer. I'm not the woman commercial officer, you know? So I think of it as my fit for that role has to be uh, because I have the right capability for it. I can bring something to the role. There are some portions of the role which are new to me and I'm learning, but can I be effective? And if I can be that, then I'm in the right job. And it's been one year and I'm really enjoying it. It's quite, uh, it's not new for me because I was in banking at that, that time when I was a senior managing director, around 10% women were uh, senior managing director in banking. And then I joined yet another traditional male dominated industry, which is mining. Yeah. And now I'm uh, among the, the senior most here, so. You mentioned that you had a lot of role models. So can you tell us uh, who were your role models when you were growing up? Yeah, so that's an interesting one. I haven't ever had one person who was my role model. So what I tend to do is uh, um, pick up the traits that I see from anyone, man or woman, uh, which resonate with me and pick those up. So it's a composite of a role model, if you know what I mean. For yeah. some, some things, uh, my maternal grandmother, my nani, was a ferocious, strong, uh, very progressive viewed woman. And uh, she, she was a big influence on my life because I could see how even at her age, her views on pro very progressive views on education for girls. In fact, she was the first one when I got my MBA offer and I needed to go to a hostel and I had an offer from Indian University as well for MBA. She was the first one to say, which one is better? Mm. And I said, the one which is very far away. And she said, of course, then you're going there. There is no question about uh, choosing something closer to it. So, you know, for some bits, she was my role model, but I would say throughout my career, I have found different people that I wanted to take something from. Mm -hmm. uh, a boss who was very good at handling people and I said, why can't I take a bit of that in my aspiration of who I am? Or even sometimes a role model can be a young person. You don't have to be someone senior to have that. So I've had composite of role models um, throughout throughout uh, my journey and continue to have those. Um, it's, it's role modeling on a particular trait, hmm. on how they handle a particular situation. Dealing with the impact of the 2008 financial crisis at RBS was a defining moment for you. So can you describe how you remain motivated to deal with such a complex and a long run problem? Yeah, sure. It, it, uh, I will do a lot of senior roles, but that particular role will always remain as one of my highlights of the career because it was just quite difficult and complex. So I was trying to um, uh, look at liquidity, which is how much cash the bank has for the, the, the largest uh, bank in the history of the financial uh, sector has just been uh, bankrupted. The whole bank was, had run out of cash. And I was, I was uh, char in charge of bringing that to the right place. And the way I looked at it is you have to find meaning in what you're doing. It was hugely complex. There was almost the team had to be started from scratch. You had, we were doing stuff for, which was 1.2 trillion pounds. Yeah. <laughs> 1.2 trillion pounds balance sheet. That was the size of the bank, which I was uh, handling. But... Uh, the issue was, I thought of it as, here I am, 
and I can make a difference for this biggest bank crisis, the biggest bank failure in the world, in the history of the world has happened. And if I do my job right, and if my team does the job right, we will have an impact of bringing that bank back to life yeah. in some way. And that was my motivation. That was the meaning that I found. And I think that was one. The second issue is when you're dealing with complexity and things which can't be repaired very quickly, you also need to think of it as a marathon, not as a sprint. Yeah. Something which is so complex and big, you have to say, have small term goals and do those, but don't expect that you'll change it overnight. Yeah. And that is very important because that's how you also sustain your own energy through that crisis. And the last bit is I did it because I didn't do it alone. I got a very diverse team with very cross-functional people who I brought into the team. And that is what I exactly told them. This is your opportunity to really like gold dust experience of contributing to making a failed bank come back on this bit. And we got some fantastic talented people and uh, did it together in three years time the liquidity position, the cash position of RBS had completely shifted. And that, uh, that was a big, uh, big win. That you're a voracious reader, but uh, despite your demanding work schedule, why do you think it's important to dedicate time to reading? Yeah, um, I am a voracious reader. Um, and uh, because of two things. One, I'm the kind of person who actually relaxes when I read something away from uh, work. And that's my one way of uh, uh, relaxation in my time. So that's, that's important. And secondly, I think, uh, as I mentioned earlier, always learning and uh, different perspectives. World has become complex. It's no longer complicated. If it is complicated, you can solve it with the equation. When it's complex, you need to bring very different viewpoints, different perspectives to the problem. Geopolitics and economics and technology and knowing about the industry and knowing about how to motivate people so these are very different perspectives yeah. and the the only way to keep yourself fresh um so that you don't get stuck in your own views is reading to to get to know so i really enjoy reading and this could be about history about geopolitics about economics about uh, technology any any of those topics uh, with all the experiences you've had so far, are there any guiding life principles that are emerging? Um, some, some I mentioned, continue to learn, uh, take pleasure in learning and developing yourself. And when I say developing yourself, I don't just mean technical knowledge. Developing yourself is also uh, how, do, how am I as a leader? Am yeah. I able to motivate people? Uh, how am I as a team player? Uh, how do I cope with pressure? I think resilience is a very important part. If you have a failure, all of us, the most successful people in life have had failures. Yeah. And that's important for everyone to know. And most important is not that you've had a failure, but how you came up from that failure. How quickly and how strongly you put yourself back in the seat. And I think that's, uh, resilience is an important one. And, and uh, thirdly, uh, the, the life lesson is you need to know uh, what, what uh, you enjoy doing. And not enjoy in terms of just like a hobby, but enjoy doing means you, you think it's meaningful and you love doing it. And, and finding that is important. Sometimes even knowing what is your strength uh, is important. Sometimes you are analytical, but you figure out, I actually like talking to people rather than just writing a code. And knowing that about yourself, being self-aware, will mean you will take your career in the right dimension. And I think that's important. And the last bit is, at least for me, it has never been about either chasing money or titles. Mm. If you do what you like and you become good at it and it's required, those things come naturally. But, but having the right motivation is important. And last thing would be, uh, it's important to remain grounded and connected to the world around you. Yeah. Um, for a person like me to pay it forward or to give back is a very important part of uh, 
just having having meaning in life. So that's something which uh, I try to do uh, quite systematically. And uh, my last question to you would be that many people uh, lack a sense of direction on careers to follow after college. So what advice would you give those people? Um, I would say not to stress too much on that. It's okay not to know exactly where you want to head. Um, uh, uh, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a long journey. So start where you can, start where you can, and be aware that you, you get to know yourself, your strengths. Uh, you should know your weaknesses so that you can mitigate them. But I think building long-term careers happens on the basis of strength, yeah. of personality, of aptitude, of skills, of your interest. So building on, on, on um, your strengths is important. And uh, it's okay to not know what you start with, whether that floats your boat or not, but it is important to really give it your 100%. Yeah. I think uh, to meander for a while is okay in the search for where you are going, but to give your 100% to that effort is important so that you can truly say, I did everything I could, I know what it is, and I will take a bit of a different route. Uh, so doing things 100% and continuing to learn wider and deeper, not just at the periphery, but deeper and wider is important. And then change, change gears. Uh, I think the careers now are, uh, can be made with uh, changing, uh, changing industry, changing skills, but on the back of depth of uh, capability that you build in a role. Thank you so much for taking the time to speak with me today on the Vital Talk series. You have been part of many dinner table conversations in our home also and we are incredibly proud of how you have broken stereotypes and achieved so much and uh, we wish you more success. Thanks a lot uh, Varun and uh, it's, uh, it's great to have been able to talk to you. Thank you.